So, thank you uh, for waiting, everybody. Welcome to create an eco-friendly world with green software engineering. Sorry for the trouble, for the delay, but uh, we can start now. My name is uh, Ko Turk, and this is... Jonas Balasin. And uh, together we are telling you something about green software engineering. But the most important thing is, why are we doing such thing like green software engineering, and why should you do it? So, we have our reasons for it, for it, and we want to show you in the video in a few minutes, and you can see why you should do it, uh, and why you should embrace it with each other. And, um, yeah, the next video credits go to the European Union. Um, yeah, they made a really nice video to make you more aware of what about uh, green software engineering, also why you should think about the world. This is you. This is our homes, our cities, our lives and livelihoods. And this is climate change. It's here. It's happening right now. People sometimes wonder, what will happen in Europe if we do nothing, if we let global warming continue? Each year, an additional 50 million people will be exposed to high wildfire danger. Heat waves will cause 90,000 more deaths every year than now. Over 2 million more people will be flooded in coastal areas and river floodplains, while annual flood damages will rise to 300 billion euros. There will be major shifts in ecological domains throughout Europe, with alpine tundra seriously contracting and almost disappearing in the Pyrenees. Droughts and water shortages will impact southern regions even more than they do now, affecting farming, crop yield, energy production and public water supply. What will happen if we act? If we limit global warming to well below 2 degrees, how will people, the economy and ecosystems in Europe benefit? Two-thirds of the increase in people exposed to high wildfire danger would be avoided. Two-thirds of the increase in deaths from heat waves would be avoided. The impacts of coastal and river flooding would be more than halved, and stress on ecosystems and habitats would be considerably lower. The drop in water resources availability and drought losses in southern regions would be halved. And if we also adapt to climate change, we can reduce impacts even further. Adaptation can have long-lasting benefits for our people, economy and our ecosystems. Our study illuminates the importance of the European Green Deal. Putting so, yeah, that's heavy, right? If you see this, you're thinking, oh wow, maybe we should do something, and maybe you should do something when programming, because we can program in a green way and also think about our GVM. And Eonot is going to, to talk more about that. And uh, uh, yeah, my name is Ko Turk. Uh, I'm working uh, at Blue IT. It's a consultancy company in the Netherlands, and I have an assignment at the Rabobank. We both work uh, at a big bank, so you need to think about sustainability, right? Uh, I like to develop software, so I'm also a developer, and I uh, love to speak and blog. Thanks. Uh, my name is Jonas Balosin. I came from Austria. I work for Raiffeisen Bank International as a software architect, but I do a lot extra. I mean, I go to conferences, I write articles, especially on the, on the performance field. And yeah, if you are interested more, you can find me on GitHub, on my website, jonasbalosin.com. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, please uh, share it uh, the much uh, as possible. That would be nice. Um, yeah, I share the slides also, so if you want to read it back or check the GitHub, we have really interesting results we made. We have a GitHub here, so later on you can also check how we did it and um, how you could do this. So. so, the most important question is, what's in it for me? What's in it for you? Right? Um, what we are going to learn you is the eight principles of green software engineering. What is it and what can you do with it? And it's more like the think of like, how do you need to approach this? Because it's a difficult subject. 
We are also going to measure, measure the GVMs. Jonat uh, will uh, tell you more about that, and we're going to choose a GVM, if possible. <laughs> and, um, and we show you some enhancement what you can implement in your daily code, some simple things. Yep. Yeah. Meanwhile, may I ask you who cares about green software engineering? On, yeah, hands up. Okay, very good. A few people. Yeah. Very nice. I hope at the end it will be some more, but yeah, if we all do something, we can maybe. Uh, yeah, uh, make it all better, I think, or make it a little better, better. But first, the philosophy, why should you uh, care? I think uh, green software engineering is uh, really important and you should take care about it. We all should. If you, we all do it, then, um, yeah, then we don't only need to do the tiniest things and then we're already s uh, saving some uh, carbon and that kind of things. I will I'll uh, show you in a minute. And yeah, sustain sta sustainability is uh, yeah, something you uh, should think about and it's already an argument. So if you do something with that argument, it's good enough. So there are eight principles of green software engineering and you can also see it there. Uh, we try to implement these and I tell you, tell you what the green software uh, engineering uh, principles are. And later on, uh, Jonat will say something about the GVMs. The interesting stuff. <laughs> and um, yeah, you need to think about carbon, uh, carbon, right? So, um, like in Paris, we try to reduce it uh, uh, lower than uh, one degree, right? And um, yeah, you need to think about it. Like, how can I help with that? Like, choosing a good GVM, saving some memory to go to the cloud or something, because yeah, that kind of thing. So, think about it. And the second one is, is energy efficiency. Like in the Netherlands, we have labels for our houses, but we can also do something like in uh, our application. This one is very efficient and the other one not. Think about it like that. Think about it, what kind of energy you are going to use. Does, every, does someone have solar panels on his roof? And how many of you are from Portugal? Still, who is not from Portugal? So yeah, I think there's something to do also for our governments, right? So yeah, think of those kind of solutions, like yeah, solar panels, that's the whole day the sun is shining here. So maybe, yeah, there are things we can improve here. And um, yeah, like uh, the wind energy or solar panels and that kind of things. That's the third one. And the third, fourth one is more like your hardware your hardware, like choose um, a computer or choose a fandom that uh, thinks about efficiency. Like don't buy a laptop that is like 100 gigabyte of RAM because you don't maybe don't use it. It's a little bit useless, that kind of things. But yeah, try to think about it. The tiny things that uh, will, will make it work, I think. Going to the cloud is something. Uh, save some memory there, save some energy. Uh, there are really nice dashboards from Azure, for example, that show you if you are in a cloud environment that shows you like, hey, um, we are reducing here or not. Don't connect all the things uh, to your application. Like if you don't need a, 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 a some kind of calls like a REST API, don't do it. Like it's really useless because if you're creating microservices a lot, that's really consuming a lot of energy and it's not good for the world. So think about like also the architects, like think about before you do something, think about the connections, make it as less as possible. And also uh, think about uh, this on a certain po point, uh, it has no use an application, so maybe we can stop it somehow or um, um, yeah. That kind of thing. This, this is an, an hardware. A monitor, like metrics. Um, yeah, use uh, metrics. Uh, uh, try to uh, check your GVM and that kind of things. is uh, really nice. <coughs> and also some. Uh, yeah, think about on each layer you can do something. So on the lowest layer you can think about more like uh, things like. Uh, um, all kind of uh, like on cloud infrastructure. Maybe we can do something there. Maybe we can uh, choose a cloud vendor. Uh, 
on every layer or the end user applications like the mobile, maybe you can save some energy there. You can also check uh, some other things like uh, metrics, auto scaling, and all those tiny steps will, will really make it worth of it. And if we do it all, then we're saving energy there and at the end the world. So the hardware, also think about the uh, hardware. Did you know that more than 2% of global CO2 emissions we, we spend at running our applications? So that's even more than the aviation industry. Like we each other creating applications, they're running on mobile devices, on data centers, and we are even uh, more bad than the aviation. And that keeps you thinking, right? So we need to think and do something and act. Uh, on every layer, of course, uh, to yeah, to improve there. I think that's why uh, this talks. So you can think about like we're running our application in a data center. So you need uh, lights, you need cooling, you need servers, monitors, network, and storage drives, because you run your application and make it worth. Like yeah, if you it needs to be worthy. Like if people need to go and uh, use it somehow. And um, I don't see Portugal here, but yeah, you can see in the US, you have the most data centers. And even in the Netherlands, you have quite a few. Uh, I don't know how many in Portugal, but yeah, they're running applications. We are running it somewhere, so it's the nice thought. It's uh, the same thought, right? One of the best green data uh, centers is, for example, Google Cloud. You don't expect it, but they uh, want to be uh, uh, neutral there. Or yeah, and digital reality also, and they try to be carbon neutral. That means like they don't spend uh, a lot of energy there, or uh, nothing even. So that's nice. So now the interesting part: the Java Virtual Machine. Yes, thanks, Cole. Yeah. Um, now we are going to give you some measurements uh, from, from a JVM perspective. Therefore, I will going to cover the next part. Um, what we did, the idea was, OK, this is nice. We have a lot of theory. You find a lot of information. But how it is in practice? How I can measure the, the power consumption, for example, for my JVM? Have you ever asked that? And therefore, we took a bunch of different JVM implementations, like you saw all of them here, GraalVM, EEC, OpenJDK, Hotspot, OpenJ9, and Prime. Um, everything was done in, uh, on Linux. The reason uh, why uh, we did it on that, because we used perf to measure the power consumption, and we were using REPL interface. What stands REPL for? It's running average power uh, power limit. Basically, this is an interface provided by the Intel chipset, which has some counters for the energy. And it looks like something uh, on the left side, on that picture. Uh, you see, uh, you know basically the, the architecture. You have the socket. On the socket, you have multiple cores, like in there. Oops, sorry. Uh, and also, you have the, the memory. What this interface, the REPL interface, does, it gives you some counters for some of those. For example, you can uh, say, OK, uh, how much my socket consume, like the, the package itself, or for example, the integrated graphics. So they are counters for some of these devices. And using the, the REPL interface, you can read those. As, uh, again, it's available on the Intel chipset x86. And for uh, and it's much convenient with perf because you run uh, a process with perf. You tell perf, hey, at the end of running, just print me the stats, and it gives you. And this is what we did. Uh, we ran different kind of applications. Uh, we collected the metrics, and then we summarized the power consumption, the total power, as basically a formula between the, the socket itself plus the, the energy of the RAM by time. Because this REPL gives you the, the energy. 
if you want to convert it in power, you have to, to divide it by time, basically. That, that's the, the formula, that's the theory, okay? So, we did this and uh, we assessed three types of applications. Um, our main goal was to take off the shelf applications, which means uh, we didn't code an application from scratch. We just found something and the one from Spring It's uh, Pet Clinic. We just took it and we did some measurements. If you're um, interested in, uh, if you want to have a grasp how we did that, I can uh, quickly jump on the, on the repository itself. And it's here. I will show you. By the way, everything what we, what we uh, rely on, it's public on the GitHub. We work together on this. And in order to print the, um, the stats, the, the energy consumption stats, where it is, this, yes. So this is the command base, yeah. So when you start an application, you say, hey, you, you started with perf. By the way, have you used perf? Hands up. Nobody? Who, who's using Linux? Oh, still a few. Oh. Yeah, still a few. Yeah. So, perf, it's, it's quite nice. So, with perf, you can just specify perf. I want the statistics. Minus A means all those events. So, these are specific power um, events, power energy events. And then, at the end, you have the application runner path, like your JVM. Basically, it, and it's it starts, it runs, at, at the end it prints you the statistics. And we did this for our analysis. Now let's get back to the presentation. Yeah. And oopsie, I'm a bit clumsy. Oops. Yeah, maybe you can. Yeah, <laughs> sure. yeah so we did this for uh, first application was called uh, Pet Clinic. As mentioned, we took it off the shelf. And we covered different JVMs. Who is using, for example, OpenJDK? Okay, a few hands. What others are using? OpenJ9? Nobody? Graal? Okay, a few hands. And who don't know it? Oh, yeah, one more hand. Very good, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so in a nutshell, what we did, uh, we start pet clinic and we um, did a load test. Why we did the load test? Because the durational is just starting and stopping the application doesn't tell you much. You need to use the application in a real way, real world scenario, to trigger all the endpoints possible. But this is not necessary, uh, sufficient. You have to trigger for just enough time to be sure, for example, that the garbage collector ran, uh, that the compiler, and all of these internal uh, things uh, kicked off because everything has um, uh, an impact on the, on the power consumption. Therefore, we uh, ran the test during 33 minutes. It was a load test, not, not a stress test. And on the left side, we then collected the statistics and we measured. As you can see here on this, um, on this page, um, Graal E offered the, the lowest um, energy consumption. On the right side, you have the normalized values. The normalized values are computed by taking one reference, which is OpenJDK, the first one, and we divided all the others against OpenJDK. That's why, for, uh, for example, for the OpenJDK, you have here one, and then we divide it all to, um, in regards to OpenJDK, just to give you a bit of, of uh, comparison in between. Yeah, so this was the first test in, in our use case. Um, so both Graal uh, VMs uh, offered a lower um, energy consumption, yeah, which is good. By the way, shorter the bar is, the better, because it's about the consumption. Then, um, the second category of such, um, let's call, uh, tooling, um, we took Renaissance. Have you heard about Renaissance? 
This is a benchmark suit which contains different categories of, um, let's call, mini applications. Uh, for example, you have functional, and the functional category contains multiple such. Uh, you have web, you have database, and so on and so forth. So we took it as is and we just ran it. The same as before. We started with perf, and in Renaissance terminology, um, we used 100 repetitions. Uh, and after these 100 repetitions, we collected the stats. And in here, as you can see, the figures are slightly different um, in the sense that this time, for example, C, had the, the Graal C had the lowest uh, energy consumed. Um, no, sorry, the last one, the, the prime one was followed by, by the Graal C. As you can see in comparison with the previous one when Graal E was, was the most efficient one from energy perspective. But the difference was like this one was 100 repetitions and the other one was a load test, so there's some difference there. So that's why the difference there. Yeah, correct. Uh, just to give you an idea, 100 repetitions f means about four hours of running. So in total, I have here five of them. It took 20 plus hours, the, the full test. So it, it's quite a lot. Um, and the third category was based on Quarkus. I haven't asked you, do you use Quarkus? Okay, a few people. Do you use Spring? <laughs> Ah, okay. 50, 50, so 50 50. Yeah. Good. Um, we did the same for Quarkus. Of course, um, we cannot assess all the applications possible. We just took one. Uh, we took one from the Quarkus examples, uh, and this is called uh, Hibernate ORM Panache. For, uh, and the same, the same uh, rule applies. In here, we measure the energy. On the right side, you have the normalized values. I would say that the best one here was the native, the native image, which means um, I, I compiled uh, the, the um, Quarkus application natively. I started, and during a load test, this is a load test again, uh, during 13 minutes of load testing, uh, that one was the, the energy reporting at the end of the execution. You can see the the... <laughs> All of these three tests has a slightly different winner. It basically depends on the load itself. It depends on, on certain things. Um, if you want to say, OK, what is the Quarkus versus Spring? In my opinion, you cannot easily do that. Um, reminder, this is not um, something that you can easily compare because all of these normalized values, they belong to different applications. Quarkus, it's a different stack. Spring, it's a different stack. There is no apple-to-apple -apple comparison. Uh, nevertheless, we decided to add those side-by-side uh, -side like a sort of comparison in the codes, but you cannot easily compare. You cannot easily say, that one is more eco-efficient than the other one. Yeah. Um, therefore, I think what we learned out of these tests is at least we cannot tell you what's the, the best one. I think the best strategy is just test your use case, just test your application. Um, our intention was to give a uh, um, methodology to tell you how we did so uh, to open your eyes. Maybe you can do the same for your own application. Maybe you can just play around and try to assess how, how much energy, how, how, um, how, how is the efficiency on your side. Yes, question. No, no, no. Um, you mean the frameworks without load? You, what? Sorry? Uh, 
Yes, uh, I personally didn't find that a real use case. Therefore, that's why we just drop it. It's also written on GitHub that we try to avoid some sort of idle scenarios. Just start the JVM, drop it. Because in, in real use cases, you don't, don't do that, right? You don't, you don't start it and stop it. Of course, you can assess the footprint, but Uh, yes, no, no, we didn't cover this use case. By the way, uh, this question um, reminds me of something. If you are interested in this, we are still in the beginning with this um, analysis slash research. Why not? So you can help us with different ideas because there is really a lot to work on. Uh, but here, we, as I said, is, we are just in the beginning. We try to, to make it somehow in a good shape to be presented, but we have a lot, of, a lot to do in, in our back. And of course, but good one. Things. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Yep. We, uh, next time uh, we will we'll think of it. I think. But yeah. Yeah. That's. Yeah. That's. Yeah. Thanks. Are there any other questions so far about the GVM? There. Yeah. First, thank you because. Uh, bring and sharing this awareness is very interesting. And um, I was wondering if it's possible, for example, or at least if you know that someone uh, integrating this kind of metrics collection, okay, um, in order to use that uh, in, in a future stage, let's say that I have uh, energy efficiency as a performance attribute on my architecture that will play a role, let's say. And uh, for example, if I'm going with uh, Quarkus, I'm going with Golang, so on and so forth. Do you know if there is that there are someone uh, already collecting this kind of metric to take uh, decisions based on that? Yes, uh, you can do that. We didn't do. You can, for example, use perf and collect. Uh, you can read the, the REPL counters real time. What we did, we just collected the statistics at the end, but this is one way. It was easy for us. You can use, you can read this real time, export this, I don't know, GMX or whatever, and then read them and decide. Yes, okay. so and it's possible in theory. Yeah. And do, do, you, do you have an, an idea if this measurement, constant measurement, will cause some overhead to the application itself on production? Perfect. It's, it's very, very light. Yeah, perfect. It's light. I wouldn't worry about this, to be honest. I wouldn't. Hmm. I will. Uh, I want to add something also to it. Like in uh, Azure, you have also some kind of dashboarding. So if you're running Azure, you can look on the marketplace. There's already a CO2 emissions dashboard uh, eventually. Next time, uh, maybe we need to add it. But yeah, it's um, yeah. You can also check your carbon inside there or your footprint. So there are some things there, dashboarding, especially with the big players, I think you can use. And Azure is one of them. Any other questions yeah, at the end? Thank you. Hello, congratulations for our presentation. You both uh, published a paper about this research or, or just an uh, internal research? Yeah, it's just in draft, I would say, now. Um, it's not something officially published. Yeah, we, we think of something, but we are not there yet. We just started with this. Okay. So it's also good for your own application to just measure it because yeah, there are different results like on different GVM. So yeah, depends on your use case and why you're using your application and your GVM. And you get different outputs, so yeah, it's a little bit difficult. But what can you? Yeah, more questions, uh, maybe. Yeah. Oh, this is another one. Sure. Yeah. But, but sorry. Uh, if you if you can see uh, more about your study, your research is available. Uh, yes, um, for sure. Everything is public. Um, it's also on the so the full the full repository is if you just Google 
GitHub JVM Energy Consumption. It's under my name, um, but mm. of course we both we work on it. We have also a QR code at the end, so you can just uh, make yes. a photo of it. And, and everything is explained here, also how we did the load testing, everything is here. So you just take it and customize it with your own local um, path mm. variables, where you have JDK installed, things like this, and you can run it, sure. You already talked about like that you uh, use different laptops, right? So uh, yep. we use different uh, laptops to make it like worth it. Don't run the tool itself and the server. They're running on its own, so it's more clear there. I think. Yep. The the only thing what we don't cover. So as I said, we cover only uh, Intel x86. On yeah. ARM, we uh. didn't do anything because on ARM you cannot use the same um, perf, it's not there. Um, but there are some options for ARM as well. Yeah. But for so the yeah, moment, you, it's you need to uh, have an Intel chipset here. But yeah, that's, uh, yeah, we are looking into that also. But yeah, my Mac, for example, is an Intel and I can install. Ubuntu on it, and it can measure also. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> so what can you do with all these kind of things? You're less consuming the energy, or yeah, you're consuming less energy. So you can, for example, uh, yeah. The image is not sh uh, mirrored anymore. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Sorry. What happened? Oh, yeah. Oh, I saw it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you can, for example, uh, yeah, uh, uh, vacuum cleaning on that kind of things or that kind of thing. So you can do other things what what you saved, and that's really great, I think. Or you can save a tree here, or yeah, it needs to, or you need to plant a tree. You need to say because your carbon footprint is already, or your carbon is already in the air. So you need to plant trees. That's a possibility. Yeah. So some more tips. This is really cool. It's a website, carbon.com, and you can just measure your website. So I'm going to... <laughs> Do we have some examples here? Do we want to measure, for example? Does someone uh, want to measure something? We can uh, go I, for... I propose a challenge. Let's measure the J Nation website. J Nation, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to uh, measure uh, jnation.pt. And we are going to calculate it. And it's measuring the carbon footprint of your, uh, of your front end. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it can be much worse, of course. But yeah, you need to think about if you're hosting your website, you need to think about like what kind of energy they are um, uh, producing, like, or like, is it green? like uh, uh, green uh, energy and that kind of things. And it's giving you some tips like, hey, you're producing CO2 and um, yeah. How many trees? You need uh, five trees a year to host this website, for example. But what I said, I already saw some much worse things. Um, I can show you, so. There's also the QR code, so if you want to test your own website or the website of your company uh, <laughs> and say to your boss, like, hey, your manager, like, hey, we need to improve here. So that's already a first step, right? So begin, I would say, with uh, making people aware. And like here, I had here something like, oh, almost 100% or 98% of the web page tested. This was one of the, not, not the best. So it was producing like, you need 20, eight trees or something a year to host that website is right like wow <laughs> so it's it's help you to think about it right to maybe i need to uh, downsize my images for example i'm already telling some more or minify it's, it's just a simple task maybe i you need to minify your html in the front end that's easy to do with some tooling and then it's already consuming less energy like you have an API of uh, 10,000 lines of code, it's not helping. If you if the he half is deprecated, remove it, and people already know it. Don't deprecate it for years or something. Uh, just don't like yeah. If code isn't used, delete it. Comments, yeah, you don't need comments, I think, because yeah, the the method itself needs to be say what it's doing. And Java doc, yeah. <laughs> 
the personal thing. So downsizing your images, like if you have uh, hosting a website with a lot of images and they are all each 10 megabytes, then you're thinking like maybe I need to compress it or yeah. 